New Hampshire on the east coast of the USA. If you want to get involved in the demolition business here, you have to play by very specific rules. The procedure is like an auction. The difference is that only the lowest price wins. Lee Darnley has been in the business for 20 years. He calculates every job with the tightest margin. The pattern is always the same. Lee gets a picture of the object, estimates the amount of work and his wife Rita sends out the tender. If Lee wins the contract, he gets to keep everything he finds in the house. There's about $300 right there in this, in the, in the furnace itself. And sometimes there are real treasures. It's worth $42,000. Start at Danley Demolition, 6 in the morning every day. 20 years ago, Lee had only one excavator. Now he has almost 40 vehicles in his fleet. Lee gives us a short briefing on which vehicles have to go to which construction site. And then our demolition professional is on his way. The company boss covers more than 200 miles today. His team's area of operation is almost as big as Great Britain. The first destination on Lee's tour, a bank wants to demolish a detached house. For $8,000, he's been awarded the contract. A loss-making deal if Lee doesn't find anything valuable. Lee now gets to see the inside of the house for the first time. Yeah, there's, I don't know, a few things here. But nothing much of value. The first room is one big disappointment. So I know that the owner has had the uh, asbestos taken out, if there was any. I don't even know what was here. But that means the guys have been in here working and they probably did a little picking themselves. Lee searches every nook, cranny and crate, but there are no treasures to be found. Yeah. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. But we can look down cellar too. Cellars can be a real gold mine. Maybe treasure hunter Lee will land a big hit down here. Cobwebs are a good sign. There's probably been no one down here since the house was empty. And Lee finds something right away too. Oh, here's a present. Should we open it? Let's see what have we got. Merry Christmas. The owners were evicted. After that, everything happens very quickly and real treasures are often left behind. What did we get? I'm not sure. And that's exactly why Lee likes his job. Every day is like Christmas. I love the presents. Jewelry, perfume, expensive china. What's inside the package? Nothing. <laughs> that's what we got. Nothing. That's funny. Somebody was going to give him a present with nothing in it. I love it. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> Trash. That's all Lee has found in the cellar so far. Even if he doesn't factor it in, the odd treasure will, of course, boost his profit margin. Well, I do see one thing that's worth a couple of dollars. And see the new, that's a brand new furnace. That's a hot air furnace that feeds the rest of the house, and that's new. And this hot water tank here, there's about $300 right there in this. In the, in the furnace itself. And then over here is the hot water tank. That's new, that's about $100. And there's the oil tank. And the oil tank has... Oh, let's see. It's got about this much oil in it, so that's good. We, sell, we salvage all the oil and reuse it, and that and that. So there's... Close to $1,000 right there, so that's a good thing. That's worth coming down in the basement for. They weren't exactly real treasures, but Lee is still pleased with the haul. Everything that we found downstairs, probably $1,500 in this house, even though it looks like crap. Today, owners rarely leave real valuables in their homes. Until a few years ago, it was quite different. Exclusive finds, or things that he simply likes, Lee collects. He even has his own shed to accommodate them. And it's quite impressive to see what Lee has found. Motorboats, antique records, cult bikes from the 1970s, the dentist's chair in which JFK was treated, and... 
This is one of um, three watches that were in the safe. It's a Bretling. It's a uh, anniversary type. It's five and a half carat diamonds and 24 karat gold and it's worth $42,000. I don't know what happened. They left three of them behind and they said everything there is yours for salvage rights. I don't know if they really knew they left this, but $42,000. And then there's two more watches. Success or failure, there's only one decisive factor in Lee's business. Usually it's the price. So I always try and give my best up front. There's also other people that I'll give a price to and they'll go to my competitors and say, okay, Dan Lee is at this much. Can you do it for 20 or 30% lower? And they'll go, yeah. Now they're not making any money because our profit margin is not that large. Lee also has to make a tight calculation for this object, a state-run liquor store, and the state never gives anything away. Um, I don't anticipate any salvage here because what happens with the state is they'll come in, they'll clean everything out. Altogether, Lee is to demolish six buildings. Functos help to estimate the costs better. The demolition professional estimates about seven weeks of work. A good deal for Lee. Together with his wife, Rita, he prepares the offer for the liquor store. There's not much time left because in a fortnight, the excavators are supposed to start tearing everything down. Because I know they're in a hurry to get it and I'd really like to win this one. And the competition is fierce. More and more fortune seekers are looking for a quick buck in the demolition business. Lee goes to rock bottom, $160,000 for demolition. Rita sends the offer to the client by email. Now it's time to keep their fingers crossed because there is no second chance. Lee makes really big money with this shopping center. Actually, his boys were only supposed to prepare a car park. But after a fire, almost the entire building has got to go. Everything that fell victim to the flames is removed by Lee's demolition squad. But his boys have to leave the rest undamaged. This makes it a tricky task because if anything gets broken that shouldn't be, Lee has to pay for it. What we're going to do is we're going to cut that roof and take this away and leave that wall because that's another building. This wall is coming down. Before that, Lee goes on a treasure hunt. But what survived the flames has been destroyed by the firefighter's water. But Lee has an eye for the hidden treasures. So now it's our turn to come in. The insurance company has already paid the tenant and all the rest is ours to sell. So what I do is I look around and I say, okay, this is good, this is better. Oh, I like that right there. That right there is very nice. I can't believe they left that behind. That's very, very nice. Not a lot of miles on it. I could probably easily get 300, 350 American dollars for that. So let's go. $30 for that maybe if, it, if I can clean it up with a steam cleaner. There's $100 right there just for that. These tires, there's another $200. So there's $600 right there just for that. Now the vacuum cleaner, and it's $35. And this is $200 a section. That's $100 just for that bench. There's $25 and there's $10. So when you add up everything in here, it just, it's crazy what people leave behind. And we're the ones that make out on it. Lee sells everything that can be used in any way at all to his regular customers on Craigslist, an online platform for classified ads, or it ends up in his own workshop. The rest is taken apart by the excavator driver, Kip, so that it can be recycled later. That's right, take that, you son of a bitch. Only when the rubbish has been cleared away does the demolition begin. And Kip only needs his digger for that too. All right, now. There's very little the guys at Danley Demolition won't raise to the ground. Steel, wood, concrete, all no problem. Only buildings higher than six stories are off limits. The reason is simple. Machinery and insurance are too expensive for buildings that high. 
This 100-year-old hotel fits Lee's profile perfectly. In the 60s and 70s, it was the top address for skiers in New Hampshire. The old hotel is being replaced by a modern wellness temple. Lee goes to see what treasures it still holds. As you can see, so a lot of times when we take this down, people buy the stones for stone walls and to rebuild old walls that need rebuilding. So between the stones down here and this, this is good. This is all copper. Jackpot, $8 a kilo, and the hotel's full of copper pipes. Now I do have a gentleman that wants these, and these are the beams that still have the bark on them, the old, old, old beams from the original house. He wants them to decorate a restaurant. The hotel not only conceals treasures, but also a dark past. At least four people have died here. That's why superstitious Lee has hired a witch to drive away the ghosts. I believe in it. Not all homes, not all buildings, but there's some that you walk into and the hair on the back of your neck stands up and you go, I'm not alone. Even though I'm walking around alone, I'm not alone. So what she did for us was a, a huge favor to all of us for this area. Now that the souls have found their peace, Lee is also no longer afraid of any spirits haunting him. Now he can concentrate fully on squeezing every last cent out of the hotel. Even these old boards, we take off, they're beautiful and end up reselling them. These are all hardwood chairs and they look, you know, they look like junk, but a lot of people love to restore them. Still pretty much in tune, so I think uh, somebody would love to have it. And instead of just trashing it, we'll send it out. Lee thinks he can make $8,000 from the hotel. What he can't make money from, he gives away. These boards here, what we'll end up doing is taking them up and they get reused and usually what happens is they flip them over to the other side and they look like new and you, don't, you can't buy them that wide anymore, so a lot of people love to have them. Meanwhile, there's hardly anything left of the shopping centre. It actually only takes a few days for the demolition itself, but most of the time goes into recycling. Lee has to separate construction waste, iron, copper, steel and aluminium. The more precisely he sorts the materials, the greater is profit. Kip is still taking the building down and he's kind of getting it all ready for Jim. And now this is all the masonry. This is all clean masonry and we crush it all up and we can use it for road base, parking lot base. This is the heavy metal. This is the real heavy stuff. That's called number one. That's the good stuff, the heavy number one. What might look like wild hammering with an excavator is systematic. Kip knows exactly how the building is constructed. Nobody messes. And that's the only way to demolish it quickly and safely. The final wall. The boys from Danley Demolition have finished the job. But most importantly, the building next door is completely undamaged. Good. It's over. Good. It's done. That's it. Now, all do is, now all we gotta do is clean it up. Nope, we're all set. The hard part's down. Nice job, Kippa. That's right. We're a team. That's right. That's right. On to the next one. That's right. Now, all the demolition pros have to do is clean up the mess on the rubble heap. 24 hours later, the construction of the new building begins. For Lee, the shopping centre was an absolute gold mine. People who use their brains like he does can even make a whole lot of money with what looks like rubbish. <laughs>